Hello, uh, welcome to today's class. So, uh, our last project we looked at how to scrub the data from a website um, using Beautiful Soup. And we were able to scrub uh, at least two pages and get our data into a CSV format. So, um, today we are going to begin a project using SQL. I'm going to be analyzing a brain stroke data using SQL and Python. So here is details about the data sets. It's about stroke and uh, people that have hypertension. So here is a brief intro. Then we have attributes of um, the data we are going to use, such as the gender column, age, hypertension, heart disease, ever married, work type, residence type, average glucose, BMI, smoking status, and stroke. So we are not going to um, be dealing too much, right? We are just going to see how to create a database with, uh, like create a database on the Jupyter Notebook, then get a CSV file you probably want to work with down to your Jupyter Notebook, take it to a data frame, uh, take it to a database, then work with the database and query your your file query your data so that's what we are going to be doing today so we need two libraries for that we need our pandas and our sql lights so we are going to be using sql lights um, for this project okay so let me run this again So we we'll start by creating our database. Okay. So for SQLite, um, pay attention to this place a bit. So for SQLite, you we use you just connect to the database. If it doesn't exist, it will be automatically if it exists it will connect to the database so I'll say connection equals to sq that's my sqlite dot connect sorry So here is where you define the name of your database. So if it is an existing database, you probably have in your file directory or wherever it is. You just need to write in the name here. But since we are starting afresh, so our name, our database, let's say brain stroke. Okay. Then dot db. Always make sure you put the dot db if you are dealing with SQLite. So I'm going to run this. So you can see that our database has been created. So right now it's for us to bring in our table and start um, importing our data. So we have our database now. Now we are going to create a table. Now before you create a table, you take a look at the CSV file you want to bring into your database to understand the data structure of your, of your data. So here is the data we want to work with. So we can see that we have the gender column like we saw earlier in the attributes. Gender, the age, hypertension, heart disease, these are all the column names. So if you are creating a table, you must make sure you create a table that represents each of these columns. And I believe we must have um, gone through some data types in SQL. So you'll be seeing me using some of them here. So here I am creating a table. Our create um, 
create syntax in SQL, create table, then the table name and the names of your columns, right? So, since we are going to be using um, the Python environment, we want to put this in a quote. So, I'll say query is equals to My create table uh, let's call the table uh, let's call it brain stroke okay brain stroke table Right, that will be the name of our table. Then our column names, we have the gender. Okay, let's let's do this. So let me bring in our table in so that we'll have a view of it just below us. So our pandas has been ported. I'll say PD the grid. Data equals So now we can view our table below here rather than going to CSV. So we have the gender. The gender is a character. So I will use Vaca. You can read more on data type in SQL, then specifically for SQL lights because it varies. Then we have our age. Age, I will use decimal. Um, the length will be four, then the number of decimal places will be one. And we have hypertension. So I'll use small int. Heart disease. a small int okay then we have ever married we have the work type Have the residence, sorry. We have the average glucose. The smoking status. Then 
lastly we have the stroke column okay so i'll just go through this and make sure everything are in order Our gender is a back, our age is a float. Now, in as much as we know we don't have decimal places in numbers and in age, but due to our current data, it's a float, so we use the decimal. Then hypertension and normal integers, we use small int. Just trying to make the work neat. Alright, so this is our table. This table here, this is it. This is it. So once you've done writing, writing this, you say with comb. Oh, let me use this other method. So you say comb. I uh, want to define our cursor. So you say cursor is equal to, remember our cone is the connection where we connect it to our database. So we want to use so, so that we can be able to execute our query. So we say call is equals to con dot cursor. Then you say cursor dot execute. Query. Okay. So if I run this. So yeah, it has run successfully. So anytime you have this output, it means that your query has run successfully. Now, if you want to view, if you want to view that your table has been created successfully, so you just need to come here. You're going to query the SQLite master to see that our table has been created. So before I go there, you want to have um, a query that drops this table if it exists. If you encounter some error in the process and maybe you try to create this table again, it might tell you that the, the table already exists, right? So you may want to drop it and create a new one. So I'll just bring this in, but I won't run it. I'll just bring in a drop statement here. So I'll say call.execute. Drop table if exists. What's the name of our table? Brain, brain stroke. Okay. So that is just there in case of any error. All right. So now we are going to check our SQLite master to confirm that our table has been created successfully. So how do you do that? We want to check. Query. Sorry. Query is equals to set select name from SQLite master. type equals to table so we just want to confirm that the table we just created is there in our SQLite master so select name from SQLite master where type is equals to table so we we'll use our cursor again call.execute execute our query then now to view it Remember, if we run code, we run this cell now, we're going to have the same output. But now we want to look at the output. We don't want it to be as an object, the where it is. 
so we say call dot fetch all then I'll run this Recognize to table. Oh, made a mistake here. Okay. Um, it's going to bring out an error. So this should be in a quote on its own. Then our double quotes. Yeah, it should be okay. Yeah, so here is it has confirmed that this table we created up above here, the breaststroke, is now on an SK um, our SQL light master. So we are good to go. So we now have our database and we have our table, right? So our table currently is empty. So we need to load this the data, this CSV file we see down here. We need to load it into our table. Okay. So if you want to really see that the table is empty, you can write so you can write a query to do that. So you say query is equals to select all from brain stroke. Now, I didn't write it on a multiple line, like, if you want to write a multiple line, like, you want to write your syntax, probably is a long one, like, in the case of our creative table, we have different lines. You will need to use the three quotes to make it look like a text. But if you just want to write on a single line, just use a single quote, right? So here is my query. I'll use my cursor to execute. My fetch all to view. So if I run this, I should have an empty list. Now, this it means that the table is empty. So uh, briefly, let me show you how you can also read the same query using a pandas because that's actually what we are going to be using moving forward. We don't want to view our table in an unorganized manner we want to see it in the tabular form so to also run this query using pandas let me show in a, in a data frame you will say pd.read sql query then you pass in the query and the database so our database is the connection we created earlier on you pass in the SQL statement, which is the query, and then the connection. Then you run it. So you to present your output. You see that this output that was there as an empty list, it will be here as an empty data frame. You've seen it. So our table is empty, and here is more uh, presentable than the fetch all. So we are going to be using this moving forward. Alright, so we are going to load this data, these values, right, into this. And you know that for inserting values into a table, we use the insert query and insert values. So here is the syntax for inserting values, which we are all aware of. Say insert into the table, write the table name. Then the values you want to insert and the values must correspond to the number of columns you have so here I'm just going to use a question mark to represent the values maybe you want to key in so here is just like a general syntax and this is the query to insert so right now we have 
a data that is over a hundred rows. So we wouldn't want to be writing insert into table for a hundred times, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to convert each row. Since what is taking the values is taking is a tuple, we are going to convert each rows in our data frame into tuples. Then once we convert it into a tuple, we will now then pass it as an argument into a, a function that would insert it into our table for us automatically. So let's see how we are going to do that. We are going to convert our, okay, we are converting our data right now. So I will come below this. On better still, let me have a copy of this above too. Okay, so we're going to convert each row now to a tuple. So we're going to use the iter tuple that will iterate through each row and convert the values to a, a tuple. Say um tuple go through our data and convert each row to a tuple. Let's assign this to a variable. Call it CSV tuple. Okay. So let's view it. CSV tuple. Let's view the first five. So it has converted to a tuple, but what it did was it included the index and the names of the column, which it's which we don't want. We don't want the names, we don't want the index. So we'll come back here and we're going to set the parameters here. We set the index. We set the index to false. Then we'll set the name to none. So let's run that again. Alright, so um, we have, let's look at one only. It seems it's too much. Let's just do one. So here we have the first, on the first row in the form of a tuple. The male 67.017 private urban 228. So it's now a tuple. So this is actually what we are going to be passing in into our empty table in our database. So right now we are going to insert into the database. this insert query then our insert statement insert into the name of our table is brain stroke and then the values so here we are going to use question mark to represent the numbers of columns we have. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 columns. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11.
We are going to use call this camera since we are executing for several lines of code. We use the execute many. Then we pass in our insert query. Then we pass in sequence of parameters each rep, which is our CSV top home. Alright. Then let's execute this. Okay, it has run. Let's view our table now and see if our values are now inside there. So we say select all from brand stroke. Let's limit our output to five. So I will say I'm not going to use the normal cursor dot fetch all. I'll just use our pandas directly. Let me use the cursor so that you see how it will look like. If I run this, see how the output is being presented and compare it to when you use your pandas. So we look at our output. So here's the first five outputs, like the first five um, rows. Like our table is no more empty. It's no more bringing out an empty list. It's now showing the values. But how it is, is not presentable, which is why we are going to be using pandas throughout. So I'll just comment this. And clear that. Let's use our pandas and read our query. So I'll say pandas dot read SQL query. Pass in, remember to pass in the query and then the connection to your database. So if I run this, we should have our, our results in the tabular form. Right, so it's no more an empty data frame. We now have our values. As you can see, it's the same thing we have here. So we've successfully created a database, created a table. Then the CSV file we want to work with, we pass in those values into the table that we created on the database. So right now we are ready to write our SQL statements and query our database to answer some few questions um, I've come up with. So briefly, let me take this out. So here are the questions we will just um, answer for this project. This is just a minor project to answer some few questions. So here are the questions we'll be answering. So we'll go straight to it. What is the distribution of gender in the data set? So I'll say query. Remember, this query can be anything. I just choose to be writing all my assigning all my queries to the variable query it can be anything of your choice anything it's just a variable okay, right so i'll be writing on multiple lines so i'll use the triple quote okay so i'll say select gender then count I'm trying to see the distribution of gender that is the question count all as count either you write as count or you just pass in the alias it works but not in all cases right so either i write as count or i just write count it will work in case of select statement but i think um, when you come to your your case case um, statement it, it doesn't uh, work or i think it's up, some some sub queries it doesn't work too all right so select gender count all as count from our table 
don't mind the spaces. I'm just trying to make the code look neat. Then I'll just group this. Okay. Then use your pandas and read the query. So I'll run this. Alright, so we have the distribution. We have more female than male in our data set. So there are 2,907 females and we have 2,074 males. So that's the distribution of the gender. So let's go on to the second question. What's the distribution of stroke in the data set? Just the same query but for a different column so I'll just copy and paste then I'll change this to stroke okay all right so um sorry <laughs> this copy and paste I forgot to change this so we're supposed to group by stroke Should give us a different output for those with stroke okay so those without stroke are actually high then those that have stroke are actually few only 248 people have stroke in our data set right so that's the distribution of stroke in data set what's the distribution of brain stroke by gender okay so we want to see uh, for each gender those that have stroke and those that do not have stroke Write my query. Select gender. Select stroke. Then count. As count. From our table, sorry, um, okay. Okay. So, so let's gender stroke count off from brain stroke, then we'll group it by our gender first, since that is what we want to see it group by. Gender. It's first of all split into male and female. Then we want to see for a males, we want to see those with stroke and those with no stroke. Then for a female, we want to see those with stroke and those with no stroke. So we say we don't group it by stroke. So we use our pandas to read our query. Okay, so that is the distribution of the stroke by gender. So we can see that for female, we have um, 2,767 people with no stroke, then 140 for those with stroke, while for male, we have 108 people with stroke. So here is the distribution of the stroke by gender. So briefly, let's go into the fourth question. Uh, for women, how many percent has stroke? For men, how many percent? Okay, let's look at the female first. So we want to see, actually we have our results here. So we just want to see these values in terms of percent. That's actually what this question is asking us to do. So how many percent has stroke? 
it's looking for this value in terms of percent so we just need to convert this to percentage so how do we do that we are going to first of all get the total numbers of female right so we say the query equals to sorry okay select count as count from brain stroke as our table name where gender equals to female Okay. This should give us the total numbers of female we have in one data set because what we are trying, what we are going heading to is we want to divide this value here by that total number, then multiply it by hundred to have it have it in percent. Okay. It's taking time, so I'm thinking we have an error. I'm not supposed to take this long. Recognize female. Oh, okay. So obviously there was a mistake. That was why it took long. Okay, this should give us an output. Um. Okay. So we are dealing with SQLite. So anytime we encounter an error such as the one we did now, it has that uh, behavior of um, cleaning the whole. Um, the whole values in our variable or in our data. So right now it's telling us zero. So for us to um, for us to deal with this, we we'll need to go up and rerun the code. These are actually common issues you encounter if you're working with SQLite. Especially once you have an error and maybe you corrected that error, it will not bring out the expected output. Rather, it will bring out zeros or empty data frames so once you encounter such just start your code either you start your kernel and start again or you start from the beginning to run the code and that's where um, the drop statement for that table comes in okay. sorry about the noise in the background Okay, so I'm going to start from the beginning to run the code. Okay. So this is where this stuff comes into play. If it wasn't here and I run this, it will tell us that the table already exists, bringing out an error. So, because of that statement, it won't bring out an error. It will drop the table and create a new one. And we are good to go. Okay. So, I'll just run this down. So we arrived here. Okay, it's running. Let's just wait a little bit for it.
So remember it was zero before. Okay, so we now have a correct output. So anytime you encounter such, just start from the beginning and run your code again. So right now, what we want to do, we want to divide this value with this. So here now, we're going to pass this as a subquery, right? So I'm going to write something like this. Now, in SQL, if you divide um, an integer with an integer, it's supposed to give you a float. You don't present that float unless you cast, you convert one of the data, one of the integer to a float before you can have it as a float. So that's why I'm going to use the cast function here. So I'll say cast count all is actually going to be an integer. I'm casting it as a float. Then, um, okay. Let me not go there first. Let me bring in the subquery. So I'll say from branch stroke. So right now we have into table. So our normal table is a branch stroke. Then I'm going to bring this in. As a table, meaning that I'm going to have this as my subquery with giving it a table name, giving it a name, sorry, giving it a name. So this is another the table I'm going to bring in now. So I'll bring this in. So what is here now is what is here, right? So I'm going to call this table. I'm going to call this total, right? So what is here is what I brought in here. And then I named this table total. So in my total table, I have a column called count. So right now I'm selecting gender from this table, stroke from this table. Then I'm counting all that is in this table, which I'll filter and let it down as float. Then I'm going to divide it. I'm going to divide it by total dot count by this. So this is inside the total table. Then under the column count. Then I'll multiply it with hundred. Then present my output as a percent. So let me filter this. I want this value to be only for females, which is 140. For female and stroke, that's 140, right? So I'll have my filter where gender equals to female. Mind you, there are different ways to write answer and questions with SQL, right? So you might maybe come across um, someone else, maybe in the task I'll be giving to you, maybe your query is different from another person's own. But I just want to know that there are different ways to write query to get to approach the same answers, right? So there might be a shortcut to this or there might be a long cut to this. So don't be uh, intimidated by that. Just know that there are different ways to write a query to answer a particular question. Okay, so this should give us what we want. So we speed it and read.
pass in the query and our database okay so we now have it in percent so 4.8 percent females have her stroke so this value we've converted to percentage so it's four why 95% of female has no stroke? All right, so that is how you answer that question. So for men, it's the same thing. You just need to filter for males. So wherever there is female, you just change it to male. Alright, so we see that five points. Okay, what's the question for men? How many percent has no stroke? So you can see that ninety four point seven percent of males has no stroke. So that's how you answer that question. Then here I just came up with this question. Let's just um, look at details about old, older um, older people, right? So here I, I chose the benchmark. Let it be seventy. So anyone above the age 70 are uh, uh, elder people then we'll just look at maybe a brief detail about people with um, age 70 and above so i'm going to filter for those with age 70 i'm going to use a cte which is a common table expression in sql i'm sure you are aware of it if you are not aware um I advise you research more on it okay so we're going to use a CTE. So we'll have a table with those that their age are above 17. So I'll say with older people. That's the name of the table. As select. Brain stroke where age greater than seventeen. So that is going to be as a table. Then what are we going to look into look into? Um, um, okay, let's see the the work type. Of gender, like people that is this elder people. What kind of work do they mostly do? Let's just look at that. So we say select gender. Um, work type. Then let's count. Okay, let's just count for each of the gender the type of work they do. So this time around, we are working with the table we created above here, the older people. We're not working with the normal brain stroke data. We're working with the older people. That's our new table. Okay, let me arrange this. So we have a CT for older people from age 70 and above. Then we are looking at the number of people working for each of the work type by gender. So we say PD Dorit SQL.
Let's see what we have. All right, so for females, um, we have more of them working in the private sector. If most of them are served employed. I think the same thing is applicable to male. So here's just a brief details about people that are old from age 70 and above. Okay, so let's go to the next question. How many people are married and has stroke? How many people are married and has stroke? So here's a simple question. As let's use married and uh, as stroke. Just filter for those that are married and have strokes. So we have um, a column called ever married. And stroke is equal to one. A one represents people with stroke, Y zero represents people with no stroke. So we we'll just read this. We have 219 people with that are married and have stroke. So that is how you answer that. How many people are not married and have stroke? So this one we are looking for those that are not married and have stroke. So I'll just copy this first here. Not married. And has stroke not married so here will be no okay. and this will remain one so we have 29 people in our data that are not married but yet they have stroke right so we have 29 of them so lastly what is the minimum average maximum age in the data so here's just like a summary statistics so it's a query um, okay, to not be on the one line, let's say first. To... So it says select max age as maximum age, then mean age as mean age. Then um, minimum average, okay, and maximum. Let's rearrange this. Sorry, I'm trying to follow the question. So we have the average. minimum age, average age, maximum age, then from our table. Okay, so we'll just read this using our pandas.
So um, we see that the minimum age is 0 0.02. That is odd. But uh, in our data set, we have children, right? Then our average age is 43.41. Then the maximum age is 42. But let's just look into this um, age. Let's just look at age below 10 and let's see what it has to say because um, I'm thinking the, they convert the value to, to year. Maybe if you convert this to months, it will be a few months, maybe a few months um, old baby. So let's just look at data um, with age below 10 and let's see what we can find from there. So we just filter where age is less than 10. Let's just look at the first 10 columns because I know it will be much. Okay, so we can see that um, we have children, we have private. I um, this data, maybe people that are putting the kids in. Okay, so we have children, they are mostly children, people that are below the age of 10, they are mostly children. And we can see that we, on, based on the first 10 um, rules, there are no hypertension, no heart disease, and no stroke. But uh, I'm curious, so let's just see if we have any children that has maybe hypertension or, or stroke. Let's see, let's just dig. A little bit deep to find out if any of these children has heart disease or stroke. So, um, so query or maybe hypertension or heart disease or stroke. Let's look. Let's look at the train. So let's say query because. So, let's select. Let's filter. Select so off from brain stroke. Where work type? Equals to children. And. Uh, Start with hypertension equals to one or heart disease equals to one or stroke. To so this query is actually going to bring out everything from our data that the work type is children then either they have stroke heart disease or or hypertension
any one of them if any of it is one it will bring out that for the the row for us so we'll just use our pandas and read this Uh, okay, so we can say that um, we have two children with stroke, then one a male with heart disease. Okay, so that was interesting. That was interesting. So um, here's the output for that. So we have three children. Two of them has stroke. The one person has heart disease. Then there are no children in our data set based on work type that has hypertension. So that's what we are going to stop for today, right? So the next thing you will do for this project is to summarize it. Sorry, this is a Python. Let's check it in Markdown. Is to summarize what we found. So I'll just do a brief summary. So first, the first one is um, just a brief summary of what we've done so far. So there. Uh, more female than male. Just give three summary here. So if you are working on your own, maybe you can add more to yours. So let's say five percent of female as stroke. Then we said two children as stroke. While one uh, one has um, heart disease. Okay. All right. So that's the end of this project. So in our next project, we are going to still consider SQL, but this time around, we are going to see how to query an already existing database. It's still going to be SQLite. But then we're not going to be using this pandas read SQL. We're going to be using the SQL magic to query our database. So here I'm just showing you one way of getting your 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 notebook ready for um, SQL analysis. Then in our next project, using pandas here. Then in our next project, we've seen how to use SQL magic where you don't need to be writing it in quotes. You just you can just write your statement directly on your notebook on the cell and run it. And to bring out the output. All right. So the whole essence of this project is actually, I know most of us will work on several platforms like DataCam, DataQuest, and an environment is already existing for us, right? So the essence of this project is actually to show you how you can work on your own data, maybe a data set of your choice in your environment. Maybe, for instance, here you're using Jupyter Notebook. Let's say you went online, you searched for a data set, it came in maybe an Excel format or whatever format it came with, you have your pandas to read it and then you want to query it using your SQL. So this project will actually show you how you can convert that, take in that um, data in whatever format it is into your table and then into your database and query it. So here's just one way of doing it. Well, I know we have database management system that can actually also assist you in importing the data. So yeah, I'm just showing you in Jupyter Notebook, how you can do that. So in our next project, we'll be working with an already existing database. We'll see how to use an SQL magic to make queries and analysis, right? So that's it for this problem, uh, for this project. If you have any question, you reach out on the WhatsApp group or you can drop a comment on the YouTube channel of the video, then I'll get back to you. All right, so thank you for
watching and for those that came to the class thank you guys for coming i'll see you in the next project all right have a nice day